another session about the brain scheduled opposite this, and I thought, well, no one's going to come to mind. That's not nearly as cool as the brain. Um, but um, thank you for coming. I'm going to be talking about uh, a work in the LFAI and Data Foundation um, about conversational assistants that converse with each other. Um, it's called the Open Voice Interoperability Initiative, and I'm Deborah Dahl. I'm a principal at a, my company, Conversational Technologies, and I'm also a senior advisor to the uh, Open Voice Interoperability Initiative. I'm mine, the, the project lead. So what is the problem um, that we're trying to solve? There's millions of chatbots and voice assistants and voice bots, uh, which we're going to talk about. We're going to call them conversational assistants, but there's millions of them in the world. Um, they're hosted on mobile phones, smart speakers, and websites, um, and they do all kinds of tasks for you. They're hosted by many organizations. Governments, businesses, nonprofits, educational institutions. But, and this is where what we're going to be worried about in this talk, each one is independent of the others, even within an organization. Uh, each one has its own expertise, and at some point it's going to reach the end of its expertise, and then what? Uh, so, Having these silos of expertise um, leads to complexity of implementations, duplication of effort, um, and for users, friction because they have to abandon the assistant that they're talking to and try to find another one that can address their problems. So the original thinking behind this project was, why don't we have uh, voice and and text, more generally text chatbots, why doesn't it work like the web? So in the World Wide Web, web pages and websites communicate with each other all the time, probably, I don't know, trillions of times a day, using standards like HTML and HTTP. So browsers can go to any destination. Um, they can then, the user can then go to different destinations, and it all works, well, it all works for the most part, pretty well. So why can't conversational assistants be able to connect and communicate with the same kinds of standard messages and formats uh, like the web? Um, and that makes conversational AI open and freely accessible like the web. That means users can go from assistant to assistant, getting more content um, as a decide that they have different goals. Um, if you're an innovator and an entrepreneur, there's more opportunity for getting your assistant, your functionality, uh, able to work with other assistants. In enterprises, um, there's more, it's more efficient to uh, have the assistants communicating with each other by a standard. Um, and We've, what we've seen is uh, organizations sometimes have been developing, especially really large organizations, they've got a little uh, skunkworks chatbot here, or official chatbot there, and there are a lot of them, and they've been developed with different different technologies, and then then it seems to then it's time to get them all working together, and this means a lot of rework. So the Voice Interoperability Initiative is developing the standards that will let independent um, chatbots and conversational assistants communicate with each other. So as I said, our goals are to let independent conversational assistants on diverse platforms communicate just like um, you can have a web browser on, on all kinds of different platforms. Uh, but they still communicate with the same web standards. That means uh, leads to reduced friction for users so that they 
don't have to visit multiple assistants to get the information they need. And then, as I said, multiple legacy assistants within an enterprise can interact, even if they were developed on different platforms. So I'm going to show you the vision of how interoperable assistance might, might work. So if we start at step one, we have a user asking a question of their, what we call a primary assistant, the user facing <coughs> inter user interface. Um, it might be a good example, might be something like Alexa. Um, do I, the user says, do I need an, a visa to visit Estonia? Um, the primary assistant knows it can't answer that question, but it can find another assistant that, that can. So it goes through this um, uh, request to a discovery agent, which would be very much parallel to something like a web search engine that uh, can find this assistant that knows about uh, traveling to Estonia. It comes back with an idea. The primary assistant then at, um, at step three, it, um, well, it, at step four actually, it, it asks this recommended assistant, uh, and let's call it bureaucrat because this is the assistant that is used by the, our partner, the Estonian government. Um, so it asks, the primary assistant asks bureaucrat for a description of its abilities, which is uh, what we call a manifest. Bureaucrat sends its ma manifest at step five. Uh, the primary assistant decides that that manifest does answer the question. And then at step seven, uh, or at, at step, um, step six, it asks bureaucrat to join the conversation. So bureaucrat um, accepts the invitation and answers the question. And then at step eight, the conversation is over and bureaucrat says goodbye. So um, we'll actually be, we'll see that um, a little bit later in uh, more detail. So uh, our project has been going for a few years. It, it started um, with some ideas at MIT, Intel, Capgemini in 2017-2018 uh, timeframe. An organization called the Open Voice Network was founded in 2020. It was a, at that time, it was a Linux Foundation community with the goals of making voice worthy of user trust and work, voice work like the web. And let's see, about six months ago, the Open Voice Interop Interoperability Initiative joined the, officially the LFAI and Data Foundation as a new project and along with a, a parallel project that, that came from the Open Voice Network called Trustmark, which has to do with, with ethical uh, voice um, systems. I won't be talking about that, but if anyone's interested, I can, I can point you in the right direction to learn about that. So we, we have a, it's a very active project. We have um, a bunch of activities that I'm going to go over now. Um, we have specifications that describe the formats of the protocols that go between assistants. We have uh, code, we, ha it's called, we call it the sandbox, and it's an open source implementation of the specifications that uh, is a good way to get started um, and try out the specifications without, without having to implement them your, yourself. Uh, we also have collaborations going on with uh, several different organizations um, that are interested in trying the, uh, trying the standards out in their own, in their own organization. Um, in addition to those collaborations, we also have several independent implementations. And I'll show you the list of our contributors and our roadmap. So we have three specifications. Uh, the first one is called dialogue events, and that is the description of the part of the message that conveys a user request to a, another assistant. So that would be something like, how, do I need a visa to travel to Estonia? That represents a user's request. 
that's contained within uh, the conversation envelope, which is the, the sort of the overall uh, message that does things like invites the other assistant to join the conversation, says goodbye, passes dialogue events around. That's an envelope specification. And then the last specification was the manifest, and that's how the format that an utter, or assistant uses to describe itself. Like, it's, it might say in, in, um, informally, uh, I know about travel to Estonia. And so that other assistants can use that manifest to decide if that, that's the assistant they need. That uh, manifest is almost finished. The 0.9 is almost finished. And I think we'll, shouldn't be more than a couple of weeks before we publish that. So that's, those are the specifications. It, the specifications themselves are very simple and they're, they're in our GitHub repository. They're, um, they're really only a few pages long because the specifications are, are quite, they're quite simple. Um, and people have had, uh, I don't know if anybody's really ever had any trouble implementing them because they're very straightforward. So uh, to go along with specifications, we have our sandbox code. And I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to play a video of that. Hello, I'm Emmett Coyne with Edge Talk, and I'm going to give you a very quick introduction to the Ovon Sandbox. Can you hear okay? Uh, I'm the architect of the Sandbox, and the Sandbox is an open source working platform to test and develop interoperable assistance using the Ovon uh, envelope standard. Uh, now remember, it's not about the functionality of specific assistance. That's up to whoever designs the assistance. It supports how multiple assistants interoperate. That's the key to this. So let's take a look at it and see what it does. Uh, this is the opening page. If you've downloaded from GitHub, um, you will see this when you start it. And let's go into the sandbox proper. And we will see that we can pick an assistant to talk to. Um, this will sort of guide you through what the messages look like, but let's start here and let's start with Sam. Sam's not a particularly smart assistant. It says hello and I don't understand you most of the time, but it's a, an actual OVON standard uh, assistant. Important things are, it has a name and it has a URL where it lives. That's basically it. So let's invite Sam and start going. Thanks for the invitation. I am ready to assist. Well, the TTS that we're using is free on the browser and it sometimes takes a little while to get started up, but it'll be fine after this. Uh, one of the things to notice is that we did an invitation to, the, to Sam by sending this message. It's uh, got a conversation. It's got a conversation ID that will carry through to all the assistants that are involved in the conversation. It's got information like it's an envelope. It's from and to where, where it goes. It's got some sort of verification, some sort of code for success or not. And the key thing here is it has an event. You can have multiple events. This one is just a, what we're calling a bare invite, just saying hello. After Sam got this uh, JSON OVAN envelope, it sent back this one. And let's take a look at this one. It keeps the conversation ID going. It says something about the schema, where it's from, its codes. It sends back a couple of events. One of them is a whisper. We don't need to worry about that right now. It's a cool additional feature you can use. The important one is the utterance, and the utterance is sent in a dialogue event. This is all in the standard specification that uh, is uh, on, on the uh, GitHub also. Um, it's got the important part is the features, which shows that we have a text 
uh, set of tokens that can be sent, and the value was what you heard her say. Okay, that's a very basic uh, introduction to the, um, what the sandbox looks like. You saw, well, you'll see those um, over on the right, the um, different assistants that are, can be reached from the sandbox. Um, so the, uh, we'll, see, we'll see some of the other assistants um, in another video in a few minutes. The, uh, there's an interesting things about this is um, it's a, it's a, this, you saw this was a speech interface. It doesn't have to be a speech interface. It can be a text interface. Um, we just happened to implement a speech for this example. And in, internally in the assistants, they can use any kind of technology that they want. Uh, Sam is pretty sure that's a, kind of a simple rule-based assistant. It doesn't do much. We have um, a couple of other assistants um, that are LLM-based. And the bureaucrat system is the one that the government of Estonia uses, and we have no idea what it does or how it works. It's just a black box from, from our perspective. It probably has some LLMs and some rule-based systems. So in Hello, my slides... I'm Emmett Coyne with Edge Talk, whoops, and I'm going to give want. you a very quick... In I must have... Hello, uh, I'm Emmett... No, no. Okay, so in, in my slides, the paper copy, I also have some hard examples of the events so you can see what they look like if you look at the PDF. Um, so I won't go over those because the, they were in the video. And we have just finished the 2.0 version of the sandbox, which is not, um, it's kind of an incremental improvement over the, the first version. It's more robust. Um, we didn't see the sequence diagram page, but it automatically generates sequence diagrams of the conversation so you can see um, what the back and forth was among the assistants. Um, and then there's some new events that handle transfers to different assistants. And that, the 2.0 is, um, it's also in our GitHub. So the third thing that I said, uh, mentioned earlier was the collaborations. <clears throat> so the biggest collaboration, <coughs> excuse me, the biggest collaboration that we have, um, we've been doing over the last six months or so, is with the government of Estonia. Uh, Estonia is, an interesting country because they have really made a full, full-blown commitment to sophisticated digital services for their citizens. <clears throat> they want they I, their vision is that there will be a single, um, single portal that a Estonian citizen or probably even a, a visitor um, can go to and find out what government services are available. Um, and I, you know, I often think, um, what would that be like in the United States if you could just go to one place and find out about your taxes and national parks and I don't know, I don't know, it does some other government services. Um, um, and, and you didn't have to des you know, desperately search the web for, for where you could find things out. Uh, but Estonia is very far along um, the track to being able to provide a single portal to their citizens. We also have some other collaborations that are just getting started. Um, the, you know, basically the way we work is we, the uh, collaborator does, does all the work. We provide advice and um, any kind of consulting that they need uh, to get started, but the, the work is done by the partner. So in addition to the at collaborations where we're actively working with our, our partners, we, there are also a lot of, well, a lot, well, four um, other implementations. And, 
it's not, it's not very many yet, but I think of it as like the ARPANET in 1969 or the World Wide Web in 1992. You've got to start with a few and then hopefully they'll burgeon. Um, so you saw the sandbox. Um, that's a user interface to a primary assistant and some sample inter assistants. The smart library is, uh, was implemented by one of, our, um, one of our contributors. It's information about books. It, it uses an LLM to answer questions, really qu any question about books that you have. Uh, the bureaucrat is the government of Estonia that provides access to Estonian government services. And the last one is a very generic uh, chat, chat, well, actually, I think it, it's a chat interface um, called the wizard, and it probably uses chat GPT-4 under the covers. But as I said, we don't really care. And I know the smart library is experimenting with lots of different LLMs. Um, and at any one time, we don't really know which one it's using. So I'm going to show you a video of the smart library. This is a really interesting one because it's not a, it's not a web interface. It's a telephone interface, like I'm sure you've been subjected to um, many customer support telephone tree type applications. This is a good one. It's um, um, actually, I should say, this is actually, the smart library is part of the phone tree. There's two other applications that, um, that go into the demonstration. So I will show you that. And so, so the, um, any visual things you see are just for the, the uh, purpose of illustrating what we're doing, that it's actually a purely voice interface. Hello, everybody. So what I'm going to try now is an interactive voice responder engine trying to send a standard oval specification to connect to AI agent. Let's have a try by calling this number and see what's going on. Welcome to the XCALLI Open Voice Interoperable Agent. Please press 1 if you want to talk with the wizard, 2 if you like to talk with the smart library, or three, in case you like to ask for specific order information. Let's talk with the smart library. Let me connect you with the smart library assistant. Please wait, delegation ongoing. Hi, I'm the smart library service. I can look up information about books and many other things. What do you want to know? Tell me please about the first edition of Harry Potter, please. Please, wait. Yeah, that's a message. Certainly the first book in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It was first published in the United Kingdom on June 26, 1997 by Bloomsbury for the first edition. Only 500 hardback copies were printed and 300 of those were sent to libraries. These first editions are now highly prized by collectors. N.N. The book was later published in the United States under the title Harry Potter and the Saw. Please press 1 if you have any more questions. Press 2 to return to the main menu or just hung up to finish. Welcome to the XCALLI Open Voice Interoperable Agent. Please press 1 if you want to talk with the wizard, 2 if you like to talk with the smart library, or 3 in case you like to ask for specific order information. Let's try the order agent. Let me connect you with the order management assistant. Please wait. Delegation ongoing. Welcome to the order assistant. Ask me anything about the Acme Limited order, please. Tell me about the shipment address, please. Please, wait. The shipment address for order number ACME 2024-005. 
dated January 5, 2024. Is Acme Limited Warehouse 789 Storage Lane Tech City This order is expected to be delivered by January 20, 2024, as per the additional notes on the order details. If there are any this queries regarding this order, the contact person is John Doe, the procurement manager. He can be reached at phone number 555-1234 or via email at Please press 1 if you have any more question. Press 2 to return to the main menu or just Welcome to the order assistant. It's Ask me anything trade. about the Acme Limited order, please. What's the unit price of the engine oil filter? Please, wait. The unit price of the engine oil filter, type B2, is $5. Please press 1 if you have any more question. Press 2 to return to the main menu or just hung up to finish. So this is a quick demo about how to deploy a visual IVR integrated with the, the OVM standard specification for message envelope. Enjoy that. Hello, everybody. So okay, so that was a, an example of one of the implementations, um, the smart, well, the smart IVR, I guess, including the smart library. These are the people who are currently um, the major contributors to our work, the Estonia team, um, David Atwater from TalkMap, who's our primary author of our specs, um, Leah Barnes and Emma Coyne, who are the um, implementers of the Sandbox. Diego um, uh, is the implementer of the uh, XCali uh, Smart Library um, IVR assistant. Olga Howard from PBS is our main use case person. And um, we are also we also have some contributions from uh, Simon Kingaby, Noreen Weissel, and Alan Wiley. What are we doing? Um, so we've as I said, we've we've done we've gotten uh, a lot of progress on the specifications for the um, uh, dialogue event and conversation envelopes. They still need some uh, more experimentation and polishing and adding detail. Um, so we're, we're going to be working on that. Um, we're also uh, getting close to the um, assistant manifest format where you ask uh, ask an assistant what it can do. And we also have an interesting, um, we're just getting started on what the idea of discovery, which is, um, as I said, it was kind of like a, a web search engine for assistants. Uh, we're not going to be, like, like with the regular web, we leave the job of, of uh, doing the actual search to a third party, like a search engine. But we have um, need to have standards for com communicating with this search engine. Uh, we're going to have some specifications that supply some uh, context and, and potential history of a conversation. If the first two assistants have had some back and forth, maybe the new assistant that's taking over the conversation is going to need some background information about um, exactly what's been going on in the conversation before. And another um, thing that we haven't worked on, but we, we know that we need to, is working on specifications that make it possible to do this with multimodal data. So um, this is a, our GitHub repo, if anybody's interested in tracking that down. Um, we have, does anybody want to take the picture? We get almost every, all of our work is, is in the repository. So that's, that'll be the, the main place you start if you want to find out more. And then I have, um, old fashioned URLs, which will be, um, if you have our, uh, PDF, They'll be there. Uh, 
And another type of information is our webinars. We have several webinars that we've um, done describing our specifications, the dialogue events, conversation envelope, the sandbox, and our collaboration with the government of Estonia. Those are all um, available. They're, the links are in our GitHub, um, but they're, they're all available on YouTube. Okay, this is kind of a, just a vision of our, the idea of global network of cooperating conversational assistance. And we're just, they're sending messages back and forth. They're talking to each other. They're ending their conversations. Now, I think um, we have, I have a couple of extra slides. I think we have time, but before I do that, let me see if there's any questions. Yeah. Is there any research on the speed difference between a single large assistant or is more specialized assistant talking to each other? Um, okay, so the question is there difference or there research on the speed difference between um, a bunch of small assistants talking to each other versus a big assistant, that a big comprehensive assistant, I guess. So why, the question would be why do you need little assistants talking to each other when why don't you just put everything in the big assistant? Um, I think they're, speed-wise, I, I don't know, but I do know that practically um, having a small, focused assistant is, is much, much easier to maintain than a gigantic assistant that does everything. Uh, if you think about uh, the process for training um, any kind of uh, machine learning algorithm, when you add new um, data, let's say you suddenly you know, decide, let's say you're the United States government and you wanna add the process for enlisting in the army, um, and then you you know have a few hundred thousand new utterances, is that going to cause catastrophic forgetting of the other information that you you already thought you knew, and then now it's gone because it's because of the training process. So I think that um, and okay, so that's one reason. Another uh, maintainability reason is you have um, your developer that's developing the small chatbots. They, um, they may have some expertise that's not really, you know, maybe they're one of the few people that have it. And then if you're trying to augment a, a large assistant that does everything, um, there might not be anybody that, that understands the big picture enough to, to um, do a good job on adding things to the, to the new assistant. I, I think it's in, in practice, um, it's hard to, uh, it's, it's not so obvious, but the way assistants are developed is, you know, somebody develops one, somebody else develops another one. They might not even know about each other, but they, or they gradually add, a company adds assistants over, over the years. And so they, they could have all kinds of different um, um, architectures. So yeah, I don't I don't know about the speed. It, it could be faster. Is there any other questions? Okay, so I, I have a I do have a couple of uh, extra topics. Um, one is a question that we get all the time um, in the area of large language models. Do we need conversational AI interoperability. And uh, there's a few answers to that. The one answer is, um, it seems to be that actually a very small percentage of web content is actually publicly available um, through a search engine. Uh, most, most information on the web is proprietary behind a paywall 
um, at some enterprise site, and you actually, as a person that uses um, the internet, um, you really don't want that information. I'll think about all your, your uh, personal data, your bank, your school records. Uh, you don't want that um, to be, find its way into the large language model. So not, a large language model is never going to know everything that you could ever want to ask it. Um, so this information, the only information from the surface web it can be put into a, a public large language model or, or hopefully even a proprietary large language model. Um, uh, yeah, so you don't want your bank's uh, data to find its way into that. So by this statistic, uh, which is, I'm sure it's kind of approximate, 96% of web content is not available to public large language models. So enterprise assistants will need to communicate internally outside of the large language models. And we think that using our specifications will be a good way to do that. Uh, another question that we often get is, how does Gen AI relate to interoperability? So it's, I think in, in practice, it's going to be very complementary. Um, if you see these little gray guys at the top, that's ca traditional conversational AI, which is, uh, has been very, very expensive to develop and requires a lot of expertise and time. And it, uh, as a result, there aren't very many of those, or there never were very many of those. And we have Gen AI, and it kind of opens the floodgates to new um, chatbots and conversational assistants because it's much, much easier to develop them with that technology. But they still are little silos that don't interoperate or collaborate with, any, with each other. With interoperability, all those really smart Gen AI cooperating conversational assistants uh, would now be able to talk to each other if they want, if they find a reason to do that. Uh, so then, the other thing that I was going to show you was um, a little bit of a, a teaser toward how we're going to be doing um, discovery. So uh, we, shot, we shot a version of this uh, slide earlier. Um, what we have to do is find a format for step two. That's a, finding a system that knows about uh, visiting Estonia. That's the user asked about visiting Estonia. And how, how do we ask the search engine, the discovery agent, how to, um, how to find that answer? Um, so we, we're still working on that problem. I think we'll probably start getting to that in a few weeks. Um, so that'll be, that'll be really interesting. Um, so the other um, two things, um, if you recall the, um, well, the main thing, that, the manifest, that, that is how an descri uh, agent describes itself. And this is not actually going to be visible, is it? Well, this is a, an idea of what a manifest could look like. Um, it looks very much like our other messages, but uh, this is um, when the um, assistant comes back and you, you ask it what it does, it comes back and it has some fields like keywords and uh, extended natural language description of what it does that could be used by a large language model or some, um, well, would, in practice, it would be a large language model. Um, so that's what we're working on right now. Um, and that's, I believe that's everything. I have a few more messages in there. So, yeah, so that's, 
That's everything I wanted to tell you today. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think the question is, if I, let's say I have a bunch of chatbots in my organization, how do I get them to communicate with each other? Um, the, what, um, I, different people do it different ways. I, I like the way that the Estonians did it which is to just put a, a wrapper around their assistants that can accept and generate uh, the open voice messages. Um, and in fact, in Estonia, they have, haven't gotten rid of their old proprietary messages. So when the me new message comes in, they have a, uh, uh, some software that looks at the message and decides what kind of message it is. But they didn't change. They didn't have to change any of their assistants. It was just like a middleware that went between um, the other assistant and and them. So I I think um, I think that's probably the way people are going to be doing it. That would be the easiest way. Any other questions? I guess not. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot.